pretty much all on the way. Okay. okay. So, so six thirty four. Yes, six thirty four. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. Call the meeting to order at 634. Marymount Council, March the 1st, 2021. On roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Here. Mrs. Graves. Here. Dr. Lewis. Here. Ms. Palazzolo. Here. Ms. Rankin. Here. Mr. Stelzer. Here. All right. Everybody had a chance to look at the minutes? Yes. Any questions? Any changes? Yeah, I, I would have one uh, recommended change. Um, on the paragraph where we were talking about the Vision 2021 report, I want that to clearly indicate that the Vision 2021 report does recommend the hiring of an administrator. And that was the official report that was issued by the MPF. Yeah, okay, where is that in there, Joe? How, is that deep? Uh, it's towards the bottom of the page, the exact page number. Or what's on the page? Is that with the um, waste fee chart? On the, um, the third last page of the minutes. So if you look at the council packet, it's page seven. Okay. Okay, so you want it you want it clearly noted that it was an MPF formal recommendation. It was a oh. recommendation in the issued report. Okay. Make that change. All right, so do I have a motion? Oh, 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 sorry. When we were talking about um, Fairfax and some of the groups that participate in, it says Mr. Bartlett says these are companies that Fairfax administrator participates in and attends meetings. It's actually organizations. Yeah, organizations instead of instead of companies. Okay, minor change. Yep. All right, I need a motion and a second to accept or to amend. No move. Okay, I need a second. 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 Is that Maggie? It was Maggie. Mm -hmm. On roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Uh, Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Ms. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right. We'll make those changes. All right. A, a motion and a second to accept the amended report. So moved. Our okay. minutes. I'm sorry, Mr. I don't know who had the second. I don't know who had the second. Maggie, Maggie had the second. No, I had the first. I don't know who had the second. Sorry. I'll okay. second. Okay. Kelly, a second. All right, Mr. Bartlett, Aye. Mrs. Graves, Aye. Dr. Lewis, Aye. Ms. Palazzolo, Aye. Mrs. Rankin, Aye. Mr. Stelzer, Aye. All right, we'll accept the amended minutes. All right, in communications, you have Chief uh, Feitner's, uh, Assistant Chief Feitner's report, kind of short this time, monthly report. Any questions for Tim? He's can hear us. He's with us. He's with us. Nope. Right. Any questions? I don't. Okay. All right. So, service department report. I don't know whether John's. No, there he is. Any any questions? Service department report. I just want to make a quick comment. Hey, John, thanks for including some uh, financial uh, uh, fiscal information in the report so we you know, know what's going on there. Appreciate that. No problem. I didn't get that. Okay, I understand now. I was going to hey. ask what that was because it wasn't labeled and I get it now. Yeah, budget 2021, Maggie, there with the uh, calendars. Yes. Okay. Can you just, I love that. Can you keep it and can you stick like maintenance department somewhere on that paper? Because I was confused. Mm -hmm. But that's awesome. Thank you. You don't have the account numbers memorized. <laughs> well, of course I do. I just didn't know which. <laughs> hey, hey, John. Um, do you have any? Uh, did, did I know? I think you mentioned this to me. Did you have a figure uh, for you know what the snow removal and um, 
you know, the amount of salt and stuff that we had used, the beet juice? Yes. In fact, I just finished up the thermal report today. Um, mm -hmm. The overall cost with the benefits was uh, twenty-three, just $23,400. That's with all the salt, the brine, the bags, all the overtime and regular time that was put in. And that was from February 8th through the uh, 19th. Wow. You guys did a great job. Can you say that number again? Sorry. Yeah, so just from February 8th through the 19th, mm -hmm. it was $23,432. Okay, so that was man out, man and lady hours, mainly man hours and materials. Correct. Got it. Okay. And that's with that's with benefits. So, right. Well, that, yeah, whole, yeah. So compensate. And overall, the whole year since January, we've actually had eight snowfalls that we were called out on, out of the twelve that we had. So we're at twenty five thousand six hundred forty nine sixty five. This what since January. And I, I also see where you've you've reordered salt. Yes, so we'll have an additional um, 50 yards, 50 tons coming in to mm -hmm. refill up what we've used already, and then that'll be it for the year. Yeah. So I gave Tony those figures to help update the uh, uh, what our, our what our cost is with the overtime and the additional salt. So. Okay. Hey, John. Yes. Um, as far as the price of the salt. Is there some kind of arrangement where if you get it by a certain time and you base it on past usage that you get better pricing? Or I thought one time along the way you had said there's a pricing structure that you can take advantage of. There was at one time. Okay. If you bought early, you got a, a discount, a couple dollar discount. And if you bought later on in the year, you, you had a different price. Mm -hmm. They're not doing that anymore. Oh, okay. So. Okay. But, the, but whatever you order, you have to pay it by at least 80% of that. But the okay. last couple of years, we were able to get out of that because of uh, the situation we had down at the shop with uh, all the plumbing piping we had for Homewood Avenue and all that, that we were allowed to get out of that contract. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. All right, uh, Tax Administrator Deanna's report. Any questions there? It's kind of short. Numbers are ahead. Numbers are ahead. Yeah. You're good. Heading in the right direction. Anyway. I, I did have a conversation with Deanna, and apparently the numbers uh, it reflects some late payments from 2020. That's kind of the uh, increase we're seeing in 2021. So uh, I wouldn't take this increase to the bank yet, like we're going to see it throughout the whole year. Yeah. Um, what she didn't know was how much came in late in January 2021 for 2019. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, she did see a flurry of checks coming in. Um, in January that related to um, uh, 2019, or I'm sorry, 2020. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, capital improvements budget. Okay. Yeah, I just updated this for um, the police since we're going to be like doing a subscription on those uh, like uh, cameras. Uh, we took that out, put it in there, the operating budget, general fund budget. And then took it out of here. Right. Okay. Any other questions about that? Kind of straightforward. Nope. All right. All right, uh, Joe. You want to take the uh, tennis courts? Yeah. Uh, so you. Estimates. I just basically forwarded the email I got from the tennis. Uh, uh, board uh, regarding the work that needs to be done. Um, basically, this crack repairs is something that's probably going to pop up every year, and it's reflected in the general fund budget for tennis. So it's something that's going to you know, probably be there for a while. And there's two two estimates that were there. One is yours, who's we've used in the past. Uh, there's an additional $600 charge to add some uh, pickleball uh, lines to court seven, because apparently that's getting very popular with some of the uh, uh, residents and, and not only residents within Marymount, but I've, what I've read, read pickleball is getting very popular oh, nationwide. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, so there's another $600 in there to paint some additional lines on court seven. Uh, and so that, you know, so the total comes to about 8150 
And I pushed to try to just do this in regular council and not have a separate uh, health and rec committee for it, just because we want to try to get this scheduled. Uh, one of the things we, we heard from the other contractor who uh, bid on the work, that they were already booked up to June. So this is something we probably need to do. And I haven't gotten a answer yet on exactly what the temperature needs to be to do this, but this is something probably we should be looking at, hopefully if we can get the contractor lined up April, May to get it done. Uh, but again, this is something we're gonna have every year and it's now reflected in the, in the general fund budget. And so, but uh, it exceeds the $5,000 uh, uh, threshold. So council needs to approve this. Any, any questions? I just have a question. So in the past, just so that we are all on the same page, um, I know we didn't do this every year. So we did it every, I don't even know how many years, um, not including the pickleball section of it, but how often had we done it in the past versus every year, just so we all have a picture of what's happening? So so maybe what, what they did before was they would let it get really bad and then they would yeah. spend more money to get it fixed. Right. I remember voting on this in the past. That's why I'm asking. Right. Yeah. So, so now, now they're going to be doing it every year. And right. That's why. And, and so it's more of a maintenance thing mm -hmm. to push off the big expense. The, right. Because there's a quote in here for like $31,000 or something mm -hmm. like that. That's for a full resurfacing. So they're trying to push that out by just doing the fixing the cracks and stuff like that. Well, and, and I'll, I'll put a little, add a, a little bit more on that $31,000, Rob. That might be something we can apply for the Nature Works grant to try to uh, receive that if we decide to do that in the future. We're not, nobody believes we should repaint this year, but if we can get a grant to pay for it, uh, mm -hmm. so that's something. But we've got to have that application in to Nature Works by June 1st. And so the pool is taking a look at their project list. Tennis is taking a look at their project list. And we have to decide, you know, from a uh, strategic uh, point of view, should we put two grant requests in or one combined? But this is something we have to figure out within the next 60 days so we get it filed. But again, if there's money out there available for this type of stuff and we have projects, let's be, you know, uh, real smart and try to, you know, get grant money in to pay for this stuff. And, 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 I'll, and I'll add another point here. Right now, the tennis is pretty much a break even with this expense in there. And so, you know, they have built the revenue stream up by attracting um, um, uh, participants and increasing fees. And on the other side, I think you've probably seen, we've got people down there starting to work on the uh, tennis shelter. And, you know, we had to put in about $20,000 out of the permanent improvement for that. But the rest of the money for that project was raised by the tennis association. Hey, typically, uh, the high school will kick some money in. Have we talked to them about anything like that? Um, they have kicked in in the past for stuff like fence uh, uh, coverings and things like that. But yeah, there is actually a contract out there too where they're supposed to uh, uh, pay for some of the expenses of the courts. It's like a 1975 contract that's floating mm -hmm. around that you know it may be a little harder to enforce. But uh, the, the tennis board is always talking to them about you know what are you going to kick in on these things? Great. It, they, they also buy the nets. They'll replace the nets. For the exactly. Nets too. So the wind, the wind screens, like Joe was saying, and the nets mm -hmm. are the things that they typically kick in for. Cool. Joe, Joe, who who does the application for those grants? Is, is that something Chris does? That nah, typically would be the village, I would imagine. I mean, you know, I don't know specifically who, but somebody's going to have to do it. But yeah, uh, I, the, the the first question I have raised to everybody is what projects do we have? And there is a South 80 meeting tomorrow night and I'm gonna ask them also. If you remember about a month ago, I sent this around to everybody and said, mm -hmm. where's the projects? Mm -hmm. Once we identify the projects, then we'll technically try to figure out who's gonna write the application and send it in. Okay, great. Cause it, it just would be a shame to let something like this slip through our hands. We, we, we really... Well, this, this NatureWorks grant's been out there for a while. And yeah. if you go back and look to see what they have actually awarded grants for, it's typically outdoor recreational facilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, they, and they have uh, allocated some money for pool work and for tennis courts, what I can see of, of uh, prior grants. So I think we're there. Now, whether we get it or not, you know, uh, I'm not gonna guarantee it, but I don't know why we wouldn't try to submit for it. But you can't get it if you don't submit. I mean, that's... 
And, and, and Bill, you and I have had a talk about this where, you know, we need to find projects right. out in the future so we can try to submit grant applications now for, you know, yep. and so a little bit of planning goes a long way in the process. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I think we're, we're good. So are we going to, are we, we going to have a motion then to accept this contract? It'll be the yours contract for 81, um, 8150. Is that how we're going to do it? I'm fine with that. Can we do it that way, Ed? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Just make a motion to approve it. That's all you all gotta right, so do. Rob, make somebody make a motion, please. So move. Second. 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 And roll call, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Uh, Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right. We'll approve that contract. And then I guess, Joe, that you've had the contact. You're kind of the point person. You're going to set the schedule, get them going. No, no. And I think, John, you're, you're, you're the uh, monitoring of the, uh, of the projects, is what I understand on, on the tennis. And, yeah. I, and, and I'm also going to ask you, are you going to monitor the projects on the pool? Because um, hopefully, are we going to have a council meeting next Monday? Yes. Okay, good. Because I've got uh, probably about four or five items for the pool that we'll have to get approval. But I, I think the idea is that John is going to be the monitoring because all of us are working, whether it's myself or Kevin Taylor. And so, you know, we, you know, you know I, I think we've spent a lot of time on this already. And I can't I don't want to ask Kevin to, to be the monitor of the project throughout the, the day. So, no, no, I'll go ahead and call Roger at Ewers and then um, put the PO in and everything. And get okay, that so, so, yeah, so that was going to be my next question is, OK, we've got the proposal from yours. Who signs the proposal? I'm assuming that's either, you know, uh, either, I'm assuming that's Bill. Who's going to take care of getting the PO in? I'll get it. It sounds like it's John. Okay, so we've got those two points. And then who monitors it? It's John. So I think we're we're off and flying. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. We'll do that. All right. Moving on. The narrative regarding the exploratory discussions with the Miami Fire District on providing fire protection services for the village of Marymount. As some of you are aware, um, myself and mainly Rob have been in discussions with the Little Miami Fire District, you know, regarding um, exploring, sort of an exploring discussion regarding Little Miami Fire Department providing us with fire services here in, in Marymount and, you know, under various arrangements. And we've, we've sort of been moving forward with these discussions and, I'm going to let Rob do, give more of the details here in a minute, but some of the reasons that we've been exploring this, of course, is that, you know, the village, obviously, we're, you know, we're faced with some financial challenges, and, you know, we have to, we, we have to be looking at every conceivable possible item that we can to either get more efficient and save money, so this is just one of the things that we're looking at. Um, you know, there's, we have a situation here where we sort of have the two stations in close proximity to one another. So, I mean, that's a factor in the discussions um, that, you, you know, I mean, the, the, for Marymount to maintain its fire department, it is a, a larger chunk of our budget. And again, uh, you know, these are all factors under consideration. Um, the Little Miami Fire Department has had contractual arrangements like this with other municipalities. Those are being looked at, being explored to see, you know, what aspects of those work for them would work for us. Um, Rob has done a pretty good job here of putting together a bunch of data, uh, you, you know, and collecting, you know, statistics and things, you know, that compare the two districts, you know, who can do what. And I'm going to let him go ahead and explain that because he basically has done the work. Okay. Um, so you guys, you got the, the tables there, and this is all from the Hampton County Communications Center. It covers a four-year period, and um, so the data is broken out for Marymount. It broke it up between fire and EMS. Again, though, to be really clear, um, this is just looking at fire for us. And also, there, there's, it's the, I want to make sure it's really clear too. We're not joining the fire district. We're not. There's no discussions about that whatsoever. It's all potentially about contracting with them. And again, Newtown already does this. Has been doing this successfully since 2016 with Anderson Township, and they've. It's worked out really well for them. So, um, but the data here shows that the response times, and this is, the response time is from when the call comes from Hamilton County 
into the firehouse and then to to when the, the fire equipment or truck arrives at the scene. So that's what this time this time frame encompasses here. And um, I had those key observations, you know, we have three times as many EMS runs as we do fire. Um, and again, EMS is not part of this conversation. It is just the fire part of it. Um, already, Little Miami is participating in 70%. They provide mutual aid to us already. And so they're there 70% of the time currently. Um, the response time, the total response time is about one second slower than our runs are. Um, we have 96.5 runs on average, which is about 4.3 runs. At, um, wait, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Thing. So yeah, 96.5 runs per year. So it's like about every four days. And out of those 965, about an average of 4.3 have actually involved a structure fire. So um, there is a lot of there's a lot of data in there that shows you know fire alarms, carbon monoxide alarms. You know there's a variety of things in there, but there's, they actually have a line that's called structure fires um, that calls that out. Um, we've also looked at things like the insurance, uh, well it's the, the ISO scores and things like that. The ISO scores are Marymount is a two, um, the, the lower the number, so one is the best, 10 is the worst. Marymount is two, Little Miami is three. Um, so they're, they're very close in that respect. Um, in 2020, we spent $937,000. And just from a, from a ballpark estimate right now, we're, we're saying that there's a potential to spend, save anywhere from 450 to 480, but that does not include how much we pay back to Little Miami to provide the service for us because they're not going to give it to us for free either. We're looking for us to win-win opportunity here. So um, that's currently what we're thinking about. Um, we have a meeting scheduled. Chief is going to meet also. He's met once, I guess, with them already. I was not part of that. But we have another meeting set up, set up with their chief and with our Chief Hines to uh, go through some of this stuff together and talk Tim some more details. Yeah, Timbers. Terry Timmers. Um, so we'll hopefully, you know, be able to come back and share some more information with you guys. We're trying to keep you up to speed, but, you know, not dragging you through all the gory details. The one thing I do want to bring up also, um, Matt Ayer um, made a recommendation to me because, you know, Matt works in the safety area and stuff like that. And so he said, you know, it'd be good to have an expert to maybe, because I'm not an expert in this by far. I don't, I don't profess to be. Hey. And so Matt provided the name of, um, Bill Kramer's Kramer and Associates, and they've got, they're based in Blue Ash, and they've done a lot of studies. Um, they sent us a copy of some studies. I passed them on to Bill, and um, it's interesting. You know, they did one of the studies for Newtown, and Newtown did come out, pull out of the Little Miami Fire District, and so I, I don't think that there's any bias here in terms of you know this this the guy, this Bill Kramer, is going to be biased one way or other because after his report, they ended up pulling out. So um, he has said that. He thinks he can do a report for us for five to ten thousand dollars, but he said he'd meet with us first for free just to better understand and maybe be able to tighten up how much um, this might cost. And so, Bill and I would like to try and meet with this guy, you know, take him up his offer to meet for free, and then come back to you guys and say, okay, here's what he says he can do, and here's roughly what it would cost, and things like that. Because it probably would be over five thousand dollars just to get your approval, but. I think it would benefit all of us to have an expert, an objective third party who can help give us um, their expert opinion about some of the stuff that we're talking about. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So just to clarify, the meetings will continue to be uh, Bill and you, Rob, with these people. And that will be the extent of it for right now. And then you'll come back and share with us. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, I would like to keep it consistent with who's involved and tight the the next meeting that rob mentioned basically that that's going to take place uh, between the two chiefs uh, mr timmers and fairfax and of course our chief and then rob and i will be there and i'm assuming you know um mike lemon might be there and, and, and maybe the mayor um carson sheldon from fairfax but the, the main point of that meeting as i understand it essentially is for the two chiefs to get together and sort of go through some of the technical nuts and bolts you know of you know how you make something like this work so and one, one, and one thing i didn't say here yet um because one of the things we, one of the ideas i think has been floated and not by me again i'm not an expert in this but i think it's a really good idea is having a, tr a test period you know maybe try this out without anybody making any hard commitments so you know let's try it 
and this summer, try it some this summer and see how it works, see what we learned from it. Um, and so that's also to Bill's point, that's part of what the conversation will be like is getting into the details about, okay, who's gonna cover what and how's the staffing work and all this other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, it will be really more nuts and bolts about how mm -hmm. that test or trial period would work. And again, we're hoping we'd learn and come out of that with, with a, 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 you know, a good feel about what's going to work, what's not going to work, and then have a, you know, have a strong basis for making whatever recommendation would come out of that. Will you guys let us know when there will be meetings? Not that I would expect to go, but just be nice to know when there's meetings and who will be attending them. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Again, to Rob's point, I think um, his suggestion about this, this study or this survey by the expert you know, let us talk with the guy first. I mean, we're sort of just proposing it as an option. We haven't really talked to the guy. We don't know specifically what he would or wouldn't do, you know, what it would cost. Um, you know, when we find that out, obviously we'll report back and, you know, we can debate it then. Okay. I don't think, I mean, I don't think debating it now as, you know, as an issue is, you know, we don't really have enough information. Agreed. And Kelly, if, you, if you'd like, I mean, I'd be happy to forward um, one of the reports this guy has done, if that helps, you know, for anybody on council who's interested in seeing that report, I'm happy to forward that on as well. I don't need it, but thank you. Okay. Just want to make the offer. No, I've probably seen it. Okay. Okay. I, 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 would, I, I would like to just say one thing here, if we could. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page is that we believe we should be exploring this uh, uh, option and that we should be gathering information to explore this option uh, and, and that there should be no um, barriers to Rob or the mayor obtaining information to try to do this analysis. Sure. That, makes and that, that all council members believe this is something we should be doing at this point in time. Yes. Yeah, I think exploring it is, is the way to go. As long as, you know, the lines of communication stay open, I'm perfectly fine with doing that. Okay, so Rob and, and, and Bill, any information you need, let's make sure we, we get it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Bill, was, Bill had mentioned that you had also talked to him about getting numbers about uh, what kind of revenue we could generate if we contracted our services. Uh, I've asked for that uh, proposal for Marymount to provide the services. And I asked for it about four or five weeks ago, I guess it was. So I haven't seen it yet, so. So he asked, uh, he asked Chief Hines. He asked Chief Hines to work that up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd just like to see that so we can look at all our options and keep everything on the table. No, I mean, I specifically asked for those five weeks ago. And, and again, and Joe, what, what, do we, what, do we, what, what, what do we need to do to be in a position to provide fire, you know, be, be the, the provider of the services. Right, right. So if things I, go well, would we consider also doing the paramedics the same way or oh. it's totally separate? Separate. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it separate because again, right now, Tony, we, we, have, we have three times as many paramedic runs in a year that we do in that, in that area. So, but one of, one of the things we have talked about is um, if, if it makes sense, if we get, if it does make sense with the fire, uh, maybe a second step would be, where are the boundary lines? Cause you know, it really, it's really, um, it's ironic that we have to drive right by their fire station to go to the industrial zone if there's an EMS run there and they have to drive right by ours if they're going out to Plainville, Williams Meadow or something like that to go to their spot. So, you know, we're, we're taking them a step-by-step -step basis but that, that is, to your point, Tony, that is one of the things that we're going to, you know, we've, we've agreed in principle, at least, that if the fire does make sense, the next thing that we would explore with them would be how might we redraw the boundary lines about who's covering what area so that mm -hmm. they get there faster, right? And I mean, that's right. always the big goal there is for EMS to get there as quickly as possible and for us to drive all the way down past their station and them to do the same thing doesn't make sense on the surface, at least. So. All right. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Any other questions? questions? Are we good? Good. All right. All right. Well, we'll keep you posted, as they say. Thank you. Okay. Uh, permission to address council. Uh, Tony, we got anybody? Uh, yes, we have one attendee. Okay. Um, 
John Purcell's got his hand up. So I will allow him to talk. Okay. Okay, Joel, sorry. Hi, thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Joel. I live over on Rowan Hill. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to bring up um, potential tax abatement. Um, main, main thing is uh, my wife and I want to put more money into our house. Um, but being on this side of Wooster, we're concerned about overcapitalizing. Um, and we just had a neighbor across the street uh, list way lower than the house is probably worth. So we're kind of in a pinch where it's like, well, we need more room, um, but without a tax abatement, it's hard to justify the investment back into the property. Um, and also that there's a house on our street, it's Murray, that's six houses down that uh, has the same exact layout of project and it is tax abated. And so just curious what your thoughts are, if there's any thought about moving abatements up the street. Yeah. You, are you, you're specifically, I, I would assume, talking about the CRA? <laughs> um, CRA, I'm, I'm yeah. not familiar. Yeah. I'm going to go with the, that, yes. Um, can I interject, Joel, could you, would you mind giving me your address again, please? Yes, ma'am. It's uh, 4104 Rowan Hill Drive. Okay. Uh, I moved in just over three years ago. Mm -hmm. the, the exact same project are very similar where they build a two car garage, master bedroom, uh, master bath above the garage. Yep. Just done on Murray yep. um, and is tax abated. And that's yep. six houses down. Yeah, so uh, Joel, just so you understand what we're talking about, there's a what you car call a CRA is a it's just basically a reinvestment district where, um, in a community, you would, you know, if it's the city of Cincinnati, there are some it's very large and there are some clearly blighted areas. Whereas in Marymount, it's a lot smaller, but we've been able to designate a CRA here. Additionally, where um, we'd like to see reinvestment, it's called a convenient what community reinvestment area yeah um, okay. that's what a CRA is so yeah. the there are very uh specific rules about how to lay out a CRA and one of them is that it must be like one contiguous area um okay. and so it's been a point of debate in council in years past um how to make it one contiguous area without including mm -hmm. places that we would not necessarily intend to give people a huge tax write-off and then lose the income that comes into the village to allow us to then you know fix streets and mm -hmm. sewers and everything else and provide services so um yeah. thank you for coming and thank you for giving us your address because it's really helpful to hear people talk about that when they're in that mm -hmm. kind of you know do we move or do we what do we do? For sure. Well, and, and the only thing, Maggie, I would say to that is um, if I invest in my property and up the value, mm -hmm. it's going to increase the value of all the properties around, right. which will increase tax revenue. Right. And, and so just, go ahead. Sorry. You, you may lose a little bit of short term tax, mm -hmm. but you will gain more um, because right now I the issue is, is that we'd be adding square footage. Mm -hmm. We would be um, putting a lot of money into the house to increase value. It's right. probably one of the most valuable properties already, mm -hmm. um, which puts me and my wife in a spot of, well, we're just gonna have to go to Indian Hill right. if we wanna add more because we, we're already kind of at the top. Right, and um, additionally, just so that uh, everybody is on the same page. So when you add to your home, the tax mm -hmm. abatement is on the increase. So like if you're already paying X number of dollars, right? And you increase your property value by $200,000, mm -hmm. 
Your tax abatement is on that two hundred thousand dollars. No, it, Maggie, Maggie, it's actually I believe it's only on fifty percent of that. Oh, it's only on portion that. Okay, oh. it's not on like the whole property value. So we're not losing yeah. like a whole lot of money there. We're just, and I am a firm believer in the rising tides raise all ships philosophy of life. Like I think that it's really valuable to um, encourage people to stay and increase their value. So yeah, well, so, thanks for listening. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, we can take a look at it, look at the boundaries, um, have the conversation. Thank you. I mean, I think that's been something that's been on the radar for a while as, as being in that committee of, of, of looking at those boundary lines, Joel. So um, yeah. just to reiterate, I, I mean, I do think that's something that council has been planning to look at at, at some point in time in the near future. Great. Yeah, this is my first meeting, so I apologize if it was just brought up. Not at all. No, thank you for coming. It's always thank good to you. hear from a new person. Come back. Yeah. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. Oh, and one other thing, if it's okay. Quickly. Um, there's a, a lot of traffic coming from Indian Hill, speeding through mm -hmm. right past Rowan and shooting down uh, that street. A speed bump would be a huge, awesome thing to slow down those cars. That's all I'll have. Trust me, Joel, the issue of speed down the Miami Hill and the cut through, that is, uh, uh, yeah, that's the hotly debated topic. And we're constantly looking at that. I uh, know, uh, Joel, <laughs> I just want, uh, just real quick, some clarification. Could you say specifically where you're talking about putting a speed bump? Is it, are you talking about on Miami or on, um, on Rowan Hill look, or where? Yeah, on, on the top of Rowan Hill, cars fly down that they don't stop at the stop sign they peel out and go straight down grace yeah um, i was just there today and finally now you can at least see the stop sign because for years we had like honeysuckle attacking yeah. the stop sign <laughs> <laughs> but at least you can see it now so i feel like now we can at least collect reasonable data about whether people are looking at the stop sign and obeying it and now we can do something about it Thanks for your time. Hey, hey Joel, um, I just want to say one quick thing to you. I'm Marcy Lewis, and Hi, the Marcy. CRA is actually in my committee. I um, inherited it from Kelly, and um, I admit I am really not up to speed, but I would like, like to make a commitment to you that I will get with Kelly, and I, Maggie, thank you for filling in for me. Um, and um, I was hoping maybe you could email me at my council email so I have contact information, and I can kind of let you know what we're doing and when we'll be meeting on it and where we'll, how we'll be proceeding. Yeah, and I'd be happy to send you an email. Thanks, Marcy. Yeah, sure. Appreciate that. Thanks, Marcy. Thanks. Okay, no other, no other attendees. No other attendees. Okay, well, that was a good one. All right, yeah. we have a special ordinance. Uh, uh, Tony, you want to read this or you want me to? I'll go ahead. Uh, in ordinance to make appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the village of Marymount, state of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 31st, 2021, and to repeal and replace ordinance 0-1-21. Okay, you, uh, you've heard the first reading. We'll have the second reading next uh, next Monday, in fact. Are we doing all three readings tonight? Yeah. That's usually how we do it, yeah. All right, sorry. I'm an aware. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Uh, you gonna let Joel go? <laughs> <laughs> Joel, you want to can you let Joel go? Uh, let's see. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll get off. <laughs> can no, you want to stay. You're an official uh, uh, unofficial council member now. Oh, I muted him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You've heard the first reading. I need a motion and a second to suspend the rules and allow for the second and third reading. So moved. A second, I need a second. Second. Second, all right, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Ms. Rankin. Aye. Are you there? What do you, Mr. What do you Mr. Say? Stelzer. Aye. All right, may we have the second reading, please? All right, in order to make appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the village of Marymount, state of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2021 and to repeal and replace ordinance 0 1 21. All right, any discussion? Everybody look this over. Are we good with this? Yeah, so I met uh, or had some discussions with the finance committee and they made some recommendations and we um, changed some, some uh, numbers around. So this will help with uh, 
kind of setting the budget for the departments for the rest of the year. Okay. Everybody else good? Yep. yep. All right, may we have the third reading then. In order to make appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the Village of Marymount, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2021, and to repeal and replace Ordinance 0 1 21. All right, I need a motion and a second to adopt. So moved. Second. Rob, Rob had the second. Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, we'll adopt that. All right, I think we have one committee report. Pay the bills oh, first. Sorry, pay the bills. Yep. Pay the bills. I always forget to pay the bills. Must be something about paying the bills. Um, everybody look everybody look the bills over. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I I've got two quick questions uh, sure. on the bills. Number sure, one, um, have we made that bonus payment yet to the employees um, that uh, you know we talked about based upon the spending in 2020, or is that still yet to be paid? Well, well we're we've been kind of, we've been doing the reviews and some of the some of the departments have we've completed the reviews. And they've been submitted. Where, where, where are we? We haven't made the payments yet. Some departments have submitted and been paid. Some departments have just submitted and submitted. Okay. A couple of departments have submitted and been paid. Some have submitted, but not they have not yet been paid. Will that be reflected separately, or is it just in regular pay? Mm -hmm. on, on the thing that said so, yeah, Joe, okay. Joe, if you look at this report, this is one of the ones that's in the packet. Oh, yeah. So at the bottom, it says incentive pay. Okay. That's what that relates to. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. All right, but there's still left some departments to, that uh, need to be paid out. Yes, yes. Okay. Sounds like a lot. Yeah, actually, uh, I think a lot of them. All right, one other quick question. Uh, sure. I saw the uh, storage charge for um, the South 80 uh, garage. Uh, is... Um, John's still on. Is there room to store that tractor down at the uh, maintenance building? I don't know if we can get it in that lower building or not. All right, just check. Because we have all, we got like four stages and all that stuff down in there. Um, and plus all the police and the old chandeliers from the uh, municipal. Well, is, is it time to clean? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. We so we decided not I... to keep those before we did this whole situation. Remember, I was advocating for spray painting. Yes, <laughs> I, I tried very hard to keep those. Hey, it's not so a big expenditure, but if we can save six hundred bucks, let's let's try to save six hundred. I think yeah. we should get the Boy Scouts down there and give them a badge to organize that. Well, I think we could just put a big for sale sign up down there. All right, just, just a quick question. So there's something to, to put on the list if we can figure out how to give them enough room to put the tractor at the maintenance building. Uh, they could you know, save a little bit of money. Yeah, and uh, and listen, I know there's kind of an extraordinary item on, on this thing about this cremation. Um, I just want to let you guys know, apparently this really is a legitimate uh, thing that municipalities have to do. Um, I think Ed can verify this with us. I mean, I actually saw it. Um, so it's almost 900 bucks. And I think you and I looked into this eight years ago because I was wondering why why do we have to pay it? But I think it, you know, we found out we had to. It, That's it exactly right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So is it that infrequent? I was going to say, in all of my time here, I just thought maybe we did something nice for a family. But is it really? It is. It she like we rarely encounter people who are actually indigent that we need to take care that, of. Like that would that would actually die within the village. Right. Uh, I think Joni said in. Yeah, in, maybe in 2015 and one in 2012. It's very infrequent. Okay, I guess I just didn't notice those. All right. Yeah, yeah that's. I have no problem helping families out. Yeah. That's okay. Good. All right. All right. So I need a motion and a second to pay the bills. So move. Don't move. Second. Whatever. Who had the second? Oh. Kelly. Kelly had the second. Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Uh, Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Selzer. Aye. Okay, pay the bills. All right, now I believe we have just the one committee report, I believe it's about the outsourcing of the Moors. 
Yep, from the Public Works and Services Committee regarding uh, the 2021 mowing contract. The Public Works and Services Committee met on February 10th, 2021 at 5 o'clock p.m. to discuss the 2021 mowing contract. In attendance were the committee chairperson, Kelly Rankin, committee member, Avia Graves, committee member, Rob Bartlett, maintenance supervisor, John Schopenberg, and Mayor Brown. The topic of discussion was whether to renew the contract with the current grass service, grass core, or put the contract out for bid. Per the contract, the village shall have the option of extending this contract for three, one additional years. This is through 2022. The extension term provided that the increase for the extension year shall not be more than 2%. Over the previous term, the 2021 contracted amount will be $47,858.76. Mr. Schiffenberg has stated that he has been satisfied with the service provided by Grass Corps. The committee recommends exercising the option to renew the contract with the Grass Corps for the 2021 year. Respectively submitted and signed by Kelly Rankin, Avia Graves, and Rob Bartlett. Thank you. Heard the report. I need a motion and a second to accept. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Any discussions? Yeah, we had, uh, who had the second? Maggie? I had the first. First. Who Marcy, had the, had, Marcy had the second. Marcy. Marcy had the second. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Any, any discussion regarding this contract, this report? Pretty cut and dried. No yeah. pun intended. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> and, and John, I mean, you're, you're satisfied with the work, right? So far, yes. Yeah. Can't beat the price. Okay. All right. On roll call, Mr. Bartlett, Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Alzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right. We'll accept that report. All right, Tony. Got a bunch of resolutions here. Uh, miscellaneous first. Oh yeah, miscellaneous. Gosh, I'm I'm in a rush, I guess tonight. Agenda. Yeah. Thank God for Tony and Joni being there. Hot day. Um, all right, the outstanding citizen award nominations. Um, obviously, you know, time is kind of running out for that. So, any anyone that's besides you all that's listening, if you have a nomination, you wish to make it, you know, get that into to Joni at the office. Uh, I think their time limit on that is going to run out on March the 11th. 11th. All right, so let's get those in. Form? Is there a form, a, 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 for, a formal form that needs to be submitted when nominating someone? Or is it a formal form? No, I think, I think form. as opposed to an informal form? Yeah, she has a form, but I think she'll put the name down on the form. There's a whole lot of information on the form. When you yeah. actually fill out the real form, it's like family and address and mm -hmm. all their accomplishments and all the things you know about them. So I would get the real one because you probably have a better shot at winning it for whoever okay. if you're using the right form. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Just all right. All right. The uh, last item on the thing is the ramifications of Kellogg's layoffs and the long term financial stability of the village. Uh -oh. um, this obviously is something that, you know, was bad news that the village got that we got. Kellogg contacted me and, uh, you know, about the layoffs. And just to quickly review, approximately, you know, out of the 530 odd people that they have currently down there, about half of them, roughly 250, will be laid off the, um, the, in July, hold on one second, I've got the paper from Kellogg's here someplace, I had it. That email that she sent, Bill? Yeah, here, here it is, I, I, I got it right here. Um, the, in, in, there's gonna be, in July, there will be, um, let me get the exact number here. There'll be, a, I think it'll be 100, 165 hourly workers in, in July. And those lines are gonna move to um, Tennessee approximately. But the, uh, then the remainder of the people laid off won't be until into the fourth quarter. So, so that does allow us a teeny bit of time before you know, we really begin to feel the full impact of this. And now I know, you know Joe's got a number, I've got a number, you know, I, I, when I first got this information, obviously I got on the phone with 
you know, Tom Brinkman, and we talked to some people at Ready Cincinnati. I've talked to the union rep, the local um, 253 Bakers uh, union guy, very nice guy. And obviously we want to go, I want to go down there. And I think Mr. Brinkman and maybe a few others might go down there and, you know, want to talk to the plant manager to see, you know, to explore, are there any options? Are there any incentives? Is there anything to be done about this, um, you know, move? So um, <laughs> it's a little vague. Thank you. I, I would, you okay, Tony? Good. <laughs> okay. I'm anticipating having the meeting with, with these people, you know, mid-March. I, I was sort of, uh, the lady from Kellogg initially put me off and said, I couldn't have it immediately. Or I'd have to wait until mid-March which is all well and good because in the meantime, this Dave, um, a guy named Dave Puckett, who's the business rep for Baker's Union Local 253 has contacted me. He contacted Sherrod Brown's office about this as well and, and passed along my contact information. So I'm probably gonna be in contact with them. I mean, the idea being, you know, is there any kind of state money, federal money, you know, to incentivize these guys to possibly, you know, keep a line, not move a line. I mean, or just to explore what options, you know, may be available to us. Um, because as I started to say a second ago, the impact, you know, from loss of the earnings tax revenue from this, you know, that the numbers kind of range. I mean, it could be as low, hopefully, as somewhere in the maybe $180,000, or it could be well over $200,000, depending upon, you know, what is the gross payroll amount that we're going to lose in this deal. So that, that obviously, for me, is going to be one of the major things that I would like to find out when I get down there. Um, I know this has been an issue that's, you know, been around this village since you know, I've been on council or since I moved back to this village, practically, there's always been that looming thing about, you know, Kellogg shuttering the plant or cutting production and so on and so forth. And now here, you know, here we're faced at least with, you know, cutting it in half. And we're, we are going to have to work and strategize, you know, as to what we're going to do about this loss of income to the village. Yeah. So I'd like to hear the rest of your thoughts. Do you have, um, go ahead, Kelly. I was just going to say, so you've talked, you've talked with um, Brinkman already and, and he's gone down there with you or you're planning. He, he, he will go down there with me. Okay. And where are you at with uh, Sherrod Brown? Uh, well, I haven't discussed it with them yet. I, like I said, I, uh, Mr. Puckett from the um, Baker's union, okay. he has talked to them and they would like my contact information. So I will be talking with them as well. If I could get Mr. Brown to go down there with me, of course I'll take him down there. Well, yeah, I mean, every contact helps. Well, you, you have to try what you can try. Yep, absolutely. Right. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Okay, go. Okay, so I, I, I requested this to be put on the council agenda. You know, and what I asked the, for it to do is, you know, how do we address our fiscal challenge? And to me, the fiscal challenge is not only the potential loss of employment at Kellogg's, but just in general, what is our plan for the village? I mean, we've had lots of conversations in the past. And when I look at it, we got two major fiscal challenges right now. Number one is that the creation of a regional, and, and I, I apologize, I was going to do a, a show some PowerPoint slides I put together. But uh, I don't have the ability to share the screen, but uh, I'll just try to go through this pretty quickly. You know, the first one is we need to create a reasonable financial plan to, to assure that we have adequate cash reserves. Because we, we, our cash reserves were getting dangerously low. We had some one-time events in 2020 that gave us some breathing room. And, and, and again, they were fairly large events. You know, uh, anything, and, and I'll, I'll share this chart with you. If you remember the chart last year uh, that, the, that we did with, that basically showed what was happened to our net cash reserves, the line was straight down from here. So we got a little bit of a blip here where we got some one-time events that gave us some cash reserve increases at the end of 2020, but we're gonna be back on that downward trend again because we, even before this announcement, we were spending more than we were bringing in. So, so Kellogg's is part of the problem, but it's not the only problem we have. 
the, I think the other fiscal challenge that we have is how do we communicate our current fiscal issues with our citizens? You know, we really haven't done too much in the past uh, year and a half about educating the public about what we're dealing with. And so we need to figure out how do we communicate with the, with the citizens? You know, because I think uh, right now we're not giving them enough right now. And, and that needs to be fixed. And then the second part of this is, is fixing this, uh, uh, you know, coming up with a plan that basically gives us pretty good assurance that we're going to be in financial stability well into the future. And I know that there's always been conversations about just raise taxes. To me, that's an unacceptable answer until we do the rest of the analysis. And so, you know, again, um, I'll just go through a couple of things real fast here. You know, the one-time events that I'm talking about in 2020, we, we got workers' comp refunds of almost $288,000. Mm -hmm. We got CARES Act receipts of almost $271,000. We received early a workers' comp or a, a, a payment from the waterworks in 2020 where the cash is going to go out in 2021. That was about $165,000. Mm -hmm. We got the Murray uh, Path donation early that's going to go out in 2021. You know, and again, that's, that's what helped turn this chart from the negative trend we were on to having a little bit of blip up. But those things aren't going to happen. And, and on top of that, we moved $300,000 in spending out of 2021 into, um, I'm sorry, out of 2020 into 2021. So we, we shifted a lot of numbers and got a lot of one-time events. You know, we've been on this downward trend for a while. And so I think we have to ask the question is, hey, how did we get here? You know, what caused some of the stuff? And I have talked about this in the past, that there was a couple of things that, you know, caused us over the last 10 years to be on this downward trend. Um, you know, the, the first thing is, is that, you know, the estate and personal property taxes were eliminated by the state in 2013. That was bringing in almost $300,000 a year into this village, but that was gone, effective in 2013. Um, we didn't address that reduction in revenue coming in until we did the safety services levy, which was uh, passed in 2017, I believe. Mm -hmm. But there was three or four years there where we had a hole in our revenues because we weren't receiving that estate and personal property taxes anymore. And so it got us on this downward trend and it's continued. And, I, and I'll say this about the, the safety services levy. I guess I was told when we passed that is that was gonna provide us enough money for eight years. If you go back and look, we spent virtually, we spent more than that revenue increase from the tax levy in 2018 and it's been you know, done ever since. So it, there's no way it was gonna uh, give us enough money for eight years after passage of that thing. So, and again, I think we need to do a holistic review. Kellogg's is part of the problem, but there's other things we need to address, you know, as part of this process. Um, you know, again, I think we blew opportunities in the past and it sounds like we're all on the same page about taking a look at these fire department options because I think there was other things in the past we could have done on a shared services or, you know, uh, and we just completely ignored them. You know, and, and the common talk at that point was Marymount doesn't need the money. I don't think that was the truth, but that was kind of the, the, the feeling that was out there. So I, I, I then you know, kind of looked at you know, what I've learned over the last 12 months is I think Marymount has some fiscal disadvantages to some other communities or neighboring communities. We got a pretty limited tax base. We only have about you know, 3,200 residents, about 1,600 living units. That's pretty small when you look at a lot of the other communities that are floating around. We've got a very small commercial and industrial zone as compared to some of the other communities. Limits our ability to raise taxes. Um, you know, right now there was a negative image in this village about that we have high real estate taxes. The problem is the village gets very little of those real estate taxes. About 9% of the real estate taxes comes to the village. 70% goes to the schools. So if we got high real estate taxes, it's not the village's deal because we really haven't passed a lot of tax levies in the past 10, 15 years. I do believe that we have a high cost on, on the operation side of the house. And I think we need to keep looking at that as much as possible. I mean, I think when we look at our staffing levels, you know, and we compare them to some of the other communities, we got more people, personnel on board than some of the other communities. And we need to keep looking at that stuff and, and question what's going on there. 
uh, in some communities, they got volunteers, you know, uh, running the fire department. We've got hired. Okay, that's fine. We made the decision to be hired, but that gives us a higher cost. And so we have to figure that type of stuff out. We have a pool and tennis facility that we're trying to provide. Most of the other communities have either created a private pool and tennis facility. We're still trying to do it as part of the municipality. We need to figure that out. You know, where do we find enough money to pay for this stuff? Um, at the end of the day, I think uh, I'm going to make a couple of recommendations here. I tried to say, okay, you know, uh, some of this stuff at some point we need to put together and communicate to citizens so they understand the dilemma we're trying to deal with here, you know, some of these things. And so I don't mind working with Tony, working with the mayor to try to figure out how do we come up with communication yeah. to educate the residents about where are we, how did we get here, and what are we going to do to, to go forward. But I would say in the next 30 days, what I'd like to see the mayor and the fiscal officer do is come up with some sort of analysis about where our current tax burden is for the Marymount residents, looking at real estate taxes, earnings taxes, and those things that we charge for, like trash, because there's other communities that don't charge for trash, and see where do we stand right now. How much are we charging the, the citizens for those three buckets? real estate taxes, earnings taxes, and, and fees. Just so we know, are we below where we need to be? Are we above where we need to be? Because you know, that's part of the equation, the revenue coming in. And, 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 and before we go and ask for a tax increase, I think we better have that piece of data in our hands. The other thing in the next 30 days I would like to see done is some sort of analysis about how much additional revenue do we need to address the restoration of reasonable cash reserves you know, I think in the past, there was always this fantasy of the million dollar general fund balance. We're fine. We got a million dollars general fund balance. What it didn't take into account is the fact that we you know, took on debt at the, you know, over the last 10 years that we have to service now. So we really didn't have a million dollars left. It, it was decreasing because we were, we were spending even more than what we were bringing in. So I think that you know, at some point, how do we get that cash reserves balance back up because it isn't reasonable right now when you compare us to the other communities. We're looking at a couple months of spending where other communities are, the, the, the minimum that I'm seeing in other communities is seven to nine months of spending is what they hold in cash reserves. We're well below that. And, and I know we talked about this a little bit last year. If we didn't get those one-time events, the special money, we probably would be looking at the state coming in and, and putting this into fiscal emergency right now. So, I mean, we need to address this or we're gonna be right back in that, that position at some point in the future. So again, when we're looking at this additional revenue we need, you know, how, you know, how do we reserve the, how do we restore reasonable cash balances? How do we address the current annual deficit with our current operating structure? Because it's there, I can see it in the numbers. Um, how do we deal with this Kellogg's issue? How do we come up with enough money for road repairs, uh, pool repairs, trees, parks, all the rest of stuff that, that I think we all agree we didn't spend enough on that over the last 10 years. So there's some, there's some things there, and, and, and John, you're going to like this, is we probably need some money for sewer repairs and replacement at some point. We're going to run into problems there. So the question is, holistically, where do we stand right now on our tax, and how much do we need to, to, to get this thing back on the right track again? And Kellogg's is, to me, a smaller piece of this, but it's a piece of it. Yeah. So I'm going I'm to look to Tony and, and, and the mayor. Are you willing to try to take this a shot over the next 30 days? Sure. No, I'd like two months. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, because this, this is five hours a week right on. now. Half season I mean, for Tony. I'll, I'll do what I can, but I can't promise anything. Yeah. And I'll work with Bill. We'll, we'll figure something out. Okay. Can we do something to communicate with the citizens about what we're dealing with in the next 30 days? I mean, I, I can work with you on it if you, if you want, but I don't have access to all the data. And so it's hard for me to try sometimes put these analysis together. Yeah. I mean, I would be a little reluctant to basically um, put something out to the residents until we actually, you know, have something you know, put together. I mean, I don't want to take us, you know, I just don't want to float information out there on a guess. I, I think right now the, the, the message we can communicate to citizens are, okay, 
we do have a little bit of breathing room here because of these one-time events that happen. But we do need to deal with this at some point. We can, we can, we can, we can be from the 40,000 foot view if you want to, and then get a little more granular as time goes on. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to communicate that because we will probably, I, I believe, depending upon what happens in Washington in the next week, probably see some more CARES Act money in 2021. Mm -hmm. And that gives us a little bit more breathing room. But we can't count on that, you know, you know, well into the future. Sooner or later, that, that uh, yeah. source of funds is going to go away. Right. Yeah, that, 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 that's a short term. Yeah, that's a short term, term kind of yeah. thing. It's not really a fix. It's just a it's just a crutch to get you one more year right. down the road. Breathing room is what it gives us. It yeah. gives so. Exactly. Breathing room. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I, I'm more than willing to take a stab at it. Yeah. I, all right, I'll let the other council members. And again, I apologize I couldn't get this uh, PowerPoint because I, you know, I had some charts and stuff. But uh, uh, let the other council members kind of apply. But I, I believe we have to take a holistic view here. Hey Joe, would you be willing to send um, your slides to us so we yep. have the numbers at our fingertips? Thanks. Thank you. That was a that was a very in depth analysis, and I appreciate all the work that you put into that. Thank you. And I, I agree with you, Joe, that this is something we have got to address. I mean, it is it's a, a systemic issue that we need to fix. And we've got some breathing room right now, but it's not going to last for long. And so we need to start. And I, and I agree with you also about communicating with residents, certainly help educate them about what the situation is and how we got here and things like that. So um, I think this is the right steps to be taken. Yeah. Well, not only how we got here, but potentially how do we get, you know, how do we get out of it? Yeah. You know, what is the, what is the fix? Right. I, and, and I use the term, it's a fiscal challenge at this point. It's not a fiscal crisis. Right. But if we don't address the challenge, it will turn into a crisis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're not bleeding to death yet, but we certainly got a cut. It's not a pay for cut. <laughs> and it's not a pay for cut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Thank you. All right. Any, anybody else? Any other comments? Good. All right, Tony, resolutions. And uh, Tony, are you there? Yeah. All right. Uh, to reappoint Don Keys. No, no, no. Sk no skip that. That table. I got table. Oh, sorry, table. Mm -hmm. Resolution to update swimming pool fees. Did, did, we, have, did, did we get the res get resolved about the junior pass thing? Because what that, that came up partway through. And Marcy, what, you were going to talk to Jordan. Yeah, I did talk to Jordan about it, and um, they do not currently have a policy about that. Um, she feels like she knows the kids sufficiently, um, and you know, because she works with them on swim teams, she works with them in swim lessons. Um, so my next step was I, I did want to look at Indian Hill and maybe Terrace Park and Madeira and see what they do. And um, I haven't done that yet, but I will do that by next Monday so I can, you know, well, let you know. She was very, she, you know, she feels like she, she, she doesn't need it, but she's very open to it. She's not against it at all. Okay. But we are, this is the, we're, we're voting tonight. This is the third reading. Well. So, so, cause it was, and I don't know, I'm looking at this document. I don't know that it includes that, that junior membership change. Joe, do you remember, remember how that came up? Well, I'm pulling up the document now. Hold on. Yeah, because I don't, I don't know that the, I don't know if this has the, because you brought it forward at the last meeting, I believe. Well, can we change it and then amend it in the future if we decide we want to add that stipulation or, we, or if we want to ask them to we, add Yeah, go through the process all over again. I mean, you can table it for, for tonight if you want. If we, if we can get the answer by next week, because I know they're going to start putting the stuff into the website and things like that, and they got and they got to get the handouts. I will, I will get it. I will get that to you next week. Yeah, bye, bye next Monday. Next Monday, no. week. Yeah, we'll, we'll table it for tonight and vote it next next Monday. I mean, if you guys, I mean, if, if you if you want to vote for it with and to keep it as is. Yeah, but I, I, I would make a recommendation. We vote for it the way it's proposed is that they're going to drop it down to uh, include you know uh, the the lower age limit, and if we have to put a additional recommendation on, is that some sort of certification or um, a competency test for uh, children at that age to come, uh, you know, uh, to, to the pool, then we just put that on later. What hurt, what harm does it do waiting though till next Monday, if it gives Marcy a little bit more time to figure it out? 
And I think there's an additional question here. So I, what I know of this is very little, but what I do know is that in the past, there was this junior membership and there wasn't any kind of competency testing, which is fine. We can go with that if that's what we want to do. <clears throat> but we, I don't think even then we knew what the potential impact would be like liability wise, insurance wise, does our insurer understand this? Is it okay? Things have changed dramatically in the eighties when we probably started this to now in those realms. And I think that would be something that we probably should um, check into prior to making a final decision on this. So I would table it. Yeah. There's a lot we need to, I mean, not a lot, lot, not that we can't do it before Monday. We need to call our insurance. We need to call Jordan and get her final. Well, I, I feel confident with Jordan, my conversation with Jordan. Yeah, that, I, I had a conversation with her also. She said it hasn't been a problem in the past that, you know, it, it was very isolated occurrences where they had somebody that maybe didn't have the right competency level and she dealt with it. And so just for my clarification, are we talking about this about adding then a junior membership back into the rates? Or are we talking about just changing the individual membership birth date? So it, you, it, yeah, it was the birth date. We were gonna, you know, basically you're gonna change it. You're gonna yeah. make it younger, right? Right. 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 right now you'd have to, you'd be 17, I believe. Right. And we're gonna take it down to nine. I mean, is there any sign off that the parent, I guess the parents, the person enrolling, so they sign off the waiver, I suppose. The only reason I'm antsy about waiting till next week is I know they've got stuff they're going to try to start rolling out. I don't know what the timing is on that. And again, I, I, I am very, how best to say, I, I'm trying to make this process move fast for the pool people. And again, they've got, their, they've got this whole marketing plan. They want to start rolling out. I know they're going to put articles in the town crier. They're going to do flyers and all the rest of the stuff. I don't know if a week impacts that or not, but I'm leery to wait the week, but I mean, we, we can try it and hopefully it doesn't impact them. I, I think the articles are due for the town crier on the 10th, March 10th is when they're due. Okay. I, so. that, that, that's fine. We'll wait a week, but I'm just saying, please, 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 in the future, let's address this stuff well in advance. Yep. I mean, if you got questions, let's get to them. Well, yeah, yeah. but you just brought that up last time and I brought up that question. Okay. So, I mean, I didn't know that that was even, you know, going to okay, be. Okay, then, then, then let's just wait. You know, uh, I'm just telling you, there, you know, we, we have opened the pool late because of, you know, activities where we didn't get done in time. And I'm trying to stay away from that as much as possible. I think I, I think the, the, the you know given that we're going to have another meeting in one week, I think within this within the interim seven days here, we can get the answers to these questions and pass it next week. So let's have a let's have a motion and a second to table. So moved. Second. All right, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Ms. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, we'll table that until next week. Tony, tennis court fees. Resolution to update uh, swimming pool fees. I'm sorry, resolution to update tennis court fees for the season. All right, that's the third reading. Um, I need a, a motion and a second to adopt. So moved. Second. Second, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Ms. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. Aye. All right, uh, Tony. Uh, to confirm the reappointment of Christopher M. Earl as village engineer for county years 2021 and 2022 and to set compensation. All right, that's the second reading. Uh, any discussion regarding that? Uh, Bill, I'll just tell you this from my perspective. He's great. He is so <laughs> easy to work with. So very, very responsive to everything. I really, really like working with him. Yeah. Second. Yeah. I'm lucky to have him. I would agree. You're doing a great job, Chris. Thank you all. <laughs> all right, all right, we'll, have, we'll have the third reading uh, next Monday. All right. To confirm the reappointment of Alyssa Wendler as part-time 
IT administrator for calendar years 2021 and 20 and 2021 and to set compensation. <laughs> so I think it's supposed to be 2022. Eh? Is it 22? 22? Is it 22 or is it? Is it or is this retroactive? No, didn't we just change? Because I think I asked this question before and I think it was on Eli. Um, we're changing compensation in the middle of her term and thus we use the same date range but change the compensation. Is that correct? Right. I think it's 20 and 21. It's 20 and 21 then. Yeah, I think because yes, we're changing the compensation in the middle of her package. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're doing it just for compensation. Yeah, we're doing it, yeah, just for just for that. All right. Anyway, that's any other questions. It's the second reading. We'll have the third reading next Monday. Uh, bids for Murray Avenue. All right to authorize the solicitation of bids for the Murray Avenue multi-use path and to declare emergency. All right, you've uh, had the first reading. I need a motion and a second to suspend the rules and allow for the second and the third reading. So moved. Second. All right, Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Palazzolo. Maggie. Aye. aye. Sorry. Sorry. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Big aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. Yeah, and I got somebody here using a leaf blower. Okay, okay maybe we have this. Maybe we have the second reading. Yes. To authorize the solicitation of bids for the Murray Avenue multi-use path and to declare emergency. All right. Um, any set? Any discussion? We all know what this is for. We all know what we're doing here. We want to be able to. Yeah, just, just a quick question. So, what is, what is the timeline? We're, we're, there's 30 days for the bids to come in. Um, you know, the, how, how does this work? I don't think it's 30 days. I think, is it 30 days, Chris? No, it was two weeks. No, no. You, you pass it tonight. It'll go in the paper on Wednesday as the first advertisement. There'll be a second advertisement. I think it's the 14th of March just to get two in there to advertise it. And then we'll close bids on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. 5 p.m. They'll submit them electronically to me, and I'll you know take an hour or so to put all the numbers together, and then I can send it to the public works and or whoever committee we want to put this in to make an award recommendation and move from there. All right, great, great. And you've got that list of contractors that I shared with you uh, yeah, from from the state and from uh, you know the people that worked on WAS and and did I ever send you the one from Hamilton County? Who their contractor is? Uh, Hamilton County Parks. Oh no! Yeah, if you can send that, that'd be great. Okay, let me let me get that to you. Thanks, Joe. Okay, third reading, Tony. Third reading to authorize the solicitation of bids for the Murray Avenue multi-use path and to declare emergency. All right, I need a motion and a second to adopt. I need a second. Second. Second, Kelly. Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right. Um, now I need a. I, need, uh, I now need a motion and a second to evoke the emergency clause. So moved. Second. second. Rob had the second. Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. And Mr. Stelzer. Aye. All right, that resolution is adopted. All right, Tony, ordinances. Ordinances to amend Marymount Code of Ordinances, Chapter 95, Parks and Recreation, Municipal Swimming Pool. All right, that's the third reading. <clears throat> I need a motion and a second to adopt. So moved. Second. 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 Mr. Bartlett. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Dr. Lewis. Aye. Ms. Palazzolo. Aye. Mrs. Rankin. Aye. Mr. Stelzer. Aye. So. You got it. All right. That will be, that motion will be, or that amendment will be adopted. Our right, next one to amend section 34.02A of the Marymount Code of Ordinances regarding residency requirements for Marshall. Tony, okay, you can probably lump all those together. That's this the second point. reading. Okay. And, and to amend section 31.076A of the Marymount Code of Ordinances 
regarding residency requirements for administrator. Okay. And section 31.004, the Merrimack Code of Ordinances regarding residency requirements for police chief. And section 31.060A, the Merrimack Code of Ordinances regarding residency requirements for the street commissioner. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right, that's it. second readings. Any uh, any discussion regarding any of that? Just to recap, this is already in our code book with the requirements, but it just really decreases the pool of potential applicants and hirees. So that's well. Uh, I, I was going back through my file a couple of weeks ago about this. I sent Mayor Paul Castro probably five seven years ago an opinion letter. These things are unconstitutional anyway. So we're just dressing up the code book here by taking these provisions out of it. Well, okay. Any other comments? We'll have the third reading next Monday. Tony. Next one to amend ordinance 0-16-20 of the Marymount Code of Ordinances to increase payment for employees. Okay, again, second reading, any, any discussion? Okay, we all good? At the third reading next, next Monday. One. To repeal ordinance 0-10-20 pertaining to maximum pay rates for all grades of recreation employees and to enact new legislation pertaining to maximum pay rates for all grades of recreational employees. All right, second reading, any questions? No, we all good? We'll have the third reading next Monday. Last one, Tony. Section 51.17 of the Marymount Code of Ordinances Fees for garbage and refuse pickup. All right, that's the first reading. Did, 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 Kelly, did you get a thing submitted to the town crier for this then? We did, we did. No, um, I talked to Susie today and she said that she had talked with you about putting something in there. No, 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 so I, I, I took responsibility the last minutes I took responsibility to get a letter in there, a thing about the um, what we're looking at from an org structure standpoint. I did not do garbage stickers because the agreement was the bill was going to do garbage stickers in the council meeting. You, you, you told me that you we got something in about the garbage stickers. We did for the March issue. Yeah, that, Al, that okay. Allison took care of. So I'll coordinate with Allison for getting something into Suzy for this one. Yeah, well, no, that's, that's, I was asking if it, you know, because it comes out what like this in the next week. I just want to make sure it was going to be in there. Right. So, no, I already talked to Susie. Got it. Okay. What? Anything else? I'm going. I'm going to adjourn. We're not me. We're, okay, we're adjourned. Yay! <laughs> Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey all. How do you do this?